you know when it starts. Live stream started. Starting to be started recordings. You see recording good. Cloud started. Backup is rolling. Good morning, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing with the Committee on Technology. At this time, would council staff please turn on their video? Please place electronic devices on vibrate or silent. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at testimony at council.nyc.gov. That is testimony at council.nyc.gov. Thank you, Chair. We are ready to begin. Thank you. Good morning. I am Council Member Robert Holden, Chair of the New York City Council's Committee on Technology, and I want to welcome you all uh, to our hearing this morning. New York City's 311 service, otherwise known as NYC 311, is a vital resource for New Yorkers. 311 is where many residents form a critical link with our city government, and uh, of course, 311 was first launched in 2003 as a call center uh, built on technology from 2002. It, it, is, uh, it is one of the first 301 systems and is the largest in the nation. Since its inception, it has evolved to provide services through text messages, mobile applications, and even social media. We are very proud of its progress, especially under DOIT Commissioner Jesse Tisch. However, the service, especially in its mobile application, is far from perfect. Uh, many service request types still do not have the option to attach uh, photos and videos, a feature that has long been present in 311 applications in other cities like San Francisco and Chicago. Moreover, the process of submitting service requests is often overly long and complicated. In some instances, submitting a service request itself is impossible, as the 311 app redirects to its uh, own web page uh, or an agency web page that does not accept service requests due to technical problems, among other issues. And we're going to get into that some of today. There are still difficulties with geolocation uh, that needs to be addressed. Uh, beyond accuracy, people may not know their exact address location, or their problem may occur within a few miles radius with no specific address. So in those circumstances, New Yorkers are left with either abandoning their attempts to submit a service request or providing inaccurate information. Uh, the City Council recently passed my legislation, Intro 1755 of 2019, uh, now known as Local Law 66 of 2021, to improve the location accuracy of the 311 intake map. I look forward to working with Commissioner Tisch to enhance this aspect of the 311 system and many others. Uh, to improve the function of 311 service, the following bills are being considered today. Intro 101, sponsored by uh, my colleague, uh, Council Member Ku, will require 311 to accept image and video data during the intake of certain service requests or complaints and then supply that data to the relevant agencies for use by their appropriate uh, by their appropriate persons. Um, intro 2303, sponsored by my good friend Council Member Drum, would require do it to update and uh, the complaint types, notify its call takers of such complaint types, and semi-annually report on the updating of the 311 complaint types to the maid, to the mayor and speaker of the city council. And finally, two bills that I sponsored, intros 2077 and 1356. Uh, intro 2077 would require 311 to provide mobile app and website users the ability to submit a request or complaint uh, in no more than four steps. Right now, sometimes it gets quite, you know, you know there's so many steps that people get frustrated. Uh, intro 1356 would require the do it uh, would require do it to create a new complaint function on 311's platform to report tow trucks illegally towing vehicles. And that's a problem that we've had in the city for quite some time. 311 has been uh, and continues to be a valuable, crucial touch point between New York City and its residents. We look forward to 
discussing the benefits and concerns surrounding 301 and anticipate valuable testimonies from the administration, experts and community advocates uh, uh, on this important issue. Uh, I'd like to recommend, uh, I'd like to recognize, sorry, I'd like to recognize uh, com uh, committee members, um, council member Ballone, and we also have with us, um, like I said before, Peter Koo, um, who would like, and Danny Drum. Peter Koo would like to make a statement about his bill now, and then we'll follow by council member Drum. Uh, council member Koo. Hello. Uh, uh, good morning. Thank you, Chair Holden. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm City Council Member Peter Ku. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the bill uh, being introduced uh, um, a few years ago. Uh, so when reporting campaigns through the 311 website, there should always be an option to submit pictures or videos under every category. Thankfully, since introduction, 311 has increased the number of complaint categories that upset videos and files. But we should codify this service into law so that the entire system is capable of receiving and storing image and video files. We should also ensure that both audio and video files are able to be accepted across all 311 platforms including mobile apps. By making this upload feature standard across the entire system, it will streamline the campaign process and give agencies visuals, visual aids to help them more effectively and efficiently address response uh, to the campaign. This is the digital age and the picture is worth a thousand words. Codifying this service will also have the added benefit of allowing limited English speakers submit complaints without worry about their translation, which is not always accurate. Thank you, Chair Holden. And th thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Council Member Koo, for your hard work on technology issues in this uh, council and in the city. And. Uh, I want to turn it over to Council Member Danny Drum for a statement on his bill. Thank you very much, Chair Holden, and thank you for hearing this legislation today. 311, the city's clearinghouse for complaints, among other functions, can be a wonderful tool, but only if it is regularly updated. Over the past 12 years, I have seen the Council pass much legislation, including my own. Many of these bills create new complaint categories in various agencies. However, 311 is not always updated to reflect such service requests. When my legislation requiring all gender signage on single occupancy restrooms was enacted in 2016, I was thrilled. This seemed like an easy way for the city to be responsive to transgender, non-binary, and gender non-conforming New Yorkers, among others. However, it has become clear that many establishments are not complying despite the minimal effort involved. Even after my office in, launched our own outreach campaign to businesses in my district, many refused to comply. When individuals, organizations in my office tried to submit our complaints via phone, app, and website, we found that such complaints could not be taken. The 311 system had not been updated even well after the law's enactment. After much effort, I was able to convince the Department of Buildings to work with the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications to update 311. Having 311 complaint numbers was critical to discovering that, that in fact, DOB was lax in enforcing the law, prompting the passage of another bill to address this unfortunate situation. The bill being heard today, intro 2303, would require DOIT to update complaint types in the 311 system by the effective date of a local law that involves a request for service and the report on such updates. New Yorkers need to know that their government is responsive. 311 is helpful to rooting complaints to the right agency, but also is a wonderful data tool to help policymakers keep track of concerns, but only if the system is updated to reflect changes in the law. 
Thank you again, Chair Holden, for hearing this bill. I appreciate all of your efforts to make technology work for all New Yorkers. Thank you again. And uh, thank you, Councilmember Drum, for your statement. And now I'll turn it over to our committee counsel, Irene Bahovsky, to go over some procedural items. Thank you, Chair Holden. I'm Irene Bahovsky, the, the counsel to the Committee on Technology, and I will be moderating this hearing today. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that you will be on mute until you are called on to testify. After you are called on, I will, will be you will be unmuted by the host. Please listen for your name to be called as I announce the panelists. We will first be hearing testimony from the administration followed by testimony from members of the public. During the hearing, if council members would like to ask questions, please use the Zoom raise hand function and I will call on you. We will be limiting council member questions to five minutes, which includes both questions and answers. All public testimony will also be limited to five minutes. After I call your name, please wait for a brief moment for the sergeant at arms to announce that you might begin before starting your testimony. I will now <clears throat> call representative of the administration to testify. We will be hearing testimony from the commissioner of the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunication, Jessica Tish. At this time, I will administer the affirmation. Commissioner, please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but, but the truth before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? I do, Irene. Thank you, Commissioner. You may begin when ready. Thank you, Irene. Good afternoon, Chair Holden and members of the City Council Committee on Technology. My name is Jessica Tisch, and I am the Commissioner of the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, also known as DOIT, and New York City's Chief Information Officer. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss our work on 311 and the legislation on the committee's docket today. As I have stated to the committee earlier this year, I have really enjoyed leading 311 over the past year plus because the call center representatives who work there are so committed to serving New Yorkers. To give you an idea of the scope of the operation, 311 services are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and 365 days a year. It is the one stop shop for fast and easy access to government services and information via a fully staffed call center even during a pandemic, web portal, mobile application, social media, text messaging, and video relay service. The 311 staff has done extraordinary work through the year and throughout this pandemic. By the end of 2020, 311 handled a record 23.5 million calls, which was the highest vol volume in 311's history. That's the equivalent of almost three calls for every New Yorker. The increased volume was driven in part by COVID-related inquiries, including vaccines, reopening, and meals assistance. Higher demand has not slowed us down. We have handled over 15 million calls year to date, 2021, which is an average of approximately 52,000 calls a day. Even with this volume, we are averaging 28 second wait times during peak hours and 10 second wait times at off peak. This excellent performance was supported by recent enhancements to the 311 system, many of which had been driven by the council. As super users of the platform, you provide invaluable feedback. I want to continue to work with you to make 311 the best it can be. With that, I will walk through each of today's introductions. Intro 0101 of 2018, sponsored by Council Member Ku, would require 311 to accept image and video data during the intake of service requests. I am pleased to report that over the past year, we have made great strides in enabling image and video submission for 311 service requests. 
including blocked driveways, park maintenance, illegal parking activity, um, dirty sidewalks, and building graffiti. To date, we have pictures and videos enabled for over 50% of all service requests. And that is largely due to the advocacy of council member Ku and Chair Holden. There are some notable exceptions, which I'd like to walk you through today, um, because I believe there are some valid reasons why certain service request types do not accept picture messages. For instance, the Department of Finance does not accept photo and video attachments because the inquiries that they handle typically relate to payment issues or rent exemption programs where pictures just wouldn't be applicable. HRA does not support photo or video messaging for service requests related to EBT card replacements because these pictures would show personal information that would be inappropriate for a 311 to collect. And the Department of Homeless Services, for example, has privacy concerns with the public submitting photos associated with service requests for homeless persons in need of assistance. I am pleased to report that the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene just notified us as we were preparing for this hearing that they will be accepting photo and video attachments on some of their service requests where useful and appropriate for things like rodent complaints and unsanitary animals. We are aiming to enable that functionality for them by the end of the year, certainly. The point is we have aggressively enabled photo and video submissions and all service request type where the functionality would be both useful and appropriate. Intro 1356 of 2019, sponsored by Chair Holden, would require do it to create a new service request category to report tow trucks illegally towing vehicles immobilized due to an accident. Here too, I am pleased to report that 311 currently accepts complaints about tow truck companies, and these complaints are addressed by the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection. I'd like to hear more from the chair about the open issues that this legislation aims to solve so that we may work in partnership with you, Chair Holden and DCWP to address your feedback. If there is a way for us to make these complaints easier to file, that is something I definitely want to explore. Intro 2077 of 2020, which is Chair Holden's other bill on the docket today, would require that the 311 system allow mobile or website users to submit a service request in no more than four steps. Today, all service requests taken in the 311 system itself follow a four step process or less format. What, where, who, and review. The issue arises when an agency has a service request that is not taken in the 311 system itself, but in the agency's system of record. These service requests do not always follow the standard 311 four step process. A good example of a service type that doesn't follow the standard four step process is notify NYC registration, which understandably requires user account setup. The agencies with the bulk of non-standard service request types are the Department of Transportation and the Department of Finance. The reason is generally that taking complaints through their source systems promotes tighter integration of these complaints with their operation. For DOT, for example, 311 takes service requests on traffic or pedestrian signals through, the DO, through DOT's signaling system. And for DOF, 311 takes service requests for property tax complaints through DOF's property tax system. If there are specific complaint types that require more than four steps, I would be happy to take that back to our team to discuss with the agency in charge of addressing those service requests. Finally, intro 2303 of 2021, sponsored by Council Member Drum, 
would require do it to add a new complaint type to 311 by the new local law's effective date. It also requires do it to semi-annually report the list of local laws that require new service requests, the number of new complaint types added, and any challenges faced in timely updating those complaint types. Our current process for creating new service requests on 311 is, as you can imagine, highly collaborative with the agency actioning those complaints to ensure that the service requests sync up with the agency's internal systems, operations, and workflows. If a new service request is needed to comply with a local law, we work with the agency to prioritize it and ensure it is implemented within the effective date prescribed. We do not, however, create service requests unilaterally. Individual agencies are involved in the legislative process resulting in local laws that impact their operations and in my opinion would be best equipped to determine what steps need to be taken in order to comply, which in some cases includes the creation of a new service request. However, this is not always explicit in the legislation in the legislative text. And there could be cases where the agency needs to put in place staffing or other resources before they can determine the best course of action. 311's expertise is limited to technology and the intake portion of the operation. If there are instances where a service request missed the mark, I want to know about it and we'll certainly bring it back to the specific agency to fix. Thank you so much for the opportunity to testify today, and I look forward to our discussion. I will now take council members' questions. Thank you, Commissioner. I will now turn it over to the chair for questions. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, and uh, we're gonna get into some questions. Uh, I'm gonna have a few questions and I'll turn it over to my colleagues who, who are uh, who have bills being uh, heard today that they may have some questions and then I'll come back, you know, and ask some more questions. But you know, we heard, Commissioner, we heard over two years ago that all reporting categories, you know, other than the ones you mentioned, obviously, to upload it, uh, an option to upload a picture. But this is still not the case. For example, uh, requesting assistance with rodent condition, you you cannot upload a photo, even where a picture of a of a dumpster would be helpful. Um, but even like street light issues don't allow for pictures. Um, so, you know, is that is that an intentional or what's or, you know, can you explain why there's a delay uh, in the development of this ability on, on certain uh, complaints? Yes, absolutely. Um, and I will speak directly to rodents and streetlights and but first I'll start more broadly. So in the new 311 system, which launched in 2019, it is really easy for me to turn on picture messaging. Um, meaning it, it's basically part of the 311 platform. It's not a huge amount of technical complexity to be able to accept picture pictures and videos. The part that was complicated was the security part that we did a year ago when we started turning the picture messaging on just to make sure we weren't um, um, accepting attachments that could cause a cyber issue for us, but that's behind us. So you, you talked about rodents and street light, rodent and street lights. And I think those are two perfect examples of the two different types of reasons why we don't accept picture messaging on certain types of SRs. So rodents is an example of a policy call on the part of the agency. In this case, the agency accepting the rodent complaints was the Department of Health. And the Department of Health just told us that they are now ready to accept picture messaging specifically for calls or service requests related to rodents. So I expect rodents, the rodent service requests to have picture messaging certainly by the end of the year. As I said, it's 
pretty easy for me to enable. And we just have to make sure that um, the picture messages get over to the receiving agency. Okay, so the rodents was really a policy call. Street lights, what I was referring to in my testimony is the signaling. Those service requests are actually not built into the 311 system. I could build them into the 311 system very easily. It's not hard to build a new service request. We frankly do it all the time. But certain agencies for certain um, service request types have told us that it is easier and better and more efficient for them to accept um, service requests in their systems of record rather than through 311. So if you call 311 to report uh, an issue with a, a signal, either a pedestrian or a traffic signal, a street light, the 311 agent will go into DOT's signaling system and put the service request directly into DOT's signaling system rather than entering it into the 311 system. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> and so those are among the reasons why on, on certain service requests, picture messaging hasn't been enabled. For us, um, our default now as we create new service requests is to enable picture messaging unless there's a valid reason, either an operational reason or a privacy reason on the agency's part why they don't want it. But picture messaging has become the default. Um, Commissioner, just what you mentioned about some agencies not, it, it's not really, you know, convenient for them to handle it uh, to photos. I, I, you know, I, I, so I, I just think taking the the complainant to, or the three one one person, you know, uh, to another route to another website, um, I think I think that could be solved. I think you said we have to work with the agencies um, a little further on this, possibly. Um, but, I agree with you. You know, I, I just don't think that making it inconvenient for the user is the is the right way. I think the agency has to adapt. So, um, when when do you think um, we can be able to upload video? Especially, I got noise complaints that it would be great to upload a video so so the operator or you know the agency could hear it. Um, let's say the police. Could I have great be, news, which is that you can upload a video today. Today? That's, that's my understanding. It, I couldn't do it the other day. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll I'll look we'll look into that one. But um, when I've used the 311, I on the 311 website, I certainly have uploaded videos, but we'll look into that specific use case in question. Right. Yeah, because there there are certain things that we could it would be oh, great sure. if we could do a video. Um, but let, let me talk about because uh, we you know I use the app a lot and I, I try to get residents to, to use it and uh, everyone I ask seems to not use it. Uh, so I, I try to tell them, look, you could do it much quicker, faster, it'd be and you could send photos and be it's better. And in most cases, you could send photos, but you know, in, in calling it, and, and um, I haven't called 311, but so I, you know, in preparation for this hearing, I had my staff and we were, I, I called this morning and I want to give you my observation. All right. And this is, this is from somebody who probably goes on the 311 app every day because I walk around the neighborhood and I, as I, my wife complains because she says, if we walk for, you know, we want to keep up a good pace. You're always stopping to do 3011 complaints and uh, we never get our heart rate up. So, so let's say, that, you know, I, I believe, in, and I think our precinct, the 104 precinct, I uh, was told by the commanding officer, we lead uh, the world in 311 complaints. So, um, but it in calling, it takes far too long to get a live operator on the 311 request. It, it took over eight minutes for my staff to get a person on the phone to make a complaint about a streetlight. So we should be able to hit zero, like we do on most uh, calls, to get a live operator to 
forego some of the all the messages that I mean is like there's a lot of messages and people get frustrated, you know, and that's what talking to my constituents. And that's why I tell them go to the app. Right. But they said the app doesn't always cover things and it doesn't. So currently you have to wait for the automated system to go through the different options. Yeah. Everything based on your on, on the issue that you're calling about. Yeah. Um, so could, could we talk about that a little bit? Yes, we sure can. All right. Um, and actually, over the past year and a half <laughs> and dealing with the spikes in 311 volume, I have become more of an expert than I ever could have imagined in IBR systems, which are the systems that you hear in the beginning when you call 311. It's a system that makes all of the all of the announcements. Um, so let me say, the eight minutes, most of that time has got to be the IVR because I manage our wait times very closely twice a day. And even at peak, we're averaging only 28 seconds after the IVR, like 28 seconds in queue to um, reach a call taker. So that begs the question, why the IVR? And I think the answer is, Three on one gets twenty got twenty three and a half million calls uh, in in twenty twenty. The vast majority of those calls do not have to go to a specific to an agent, meaning they can be handled just by a recorded message that everyone hears. Like for example, alternate side of the street parking, that is our single largest call driver. And if I sent all of those, like, I don't know how many million alternate side of the street parking calls to a live agent, rather than having a recorded message up front that everyone hears, it would make your wait time when you're calling to report a signal problem much longer than eight minutes. So we use the IVR at its first instance to get calls out of queue that can be handled with the recording so that when you get into line, it's only 28 seconds and not 40 minutes. Second is we use the IVR. Oh, are you speaking? I can't hear. I think you're on mute. Oh, maybe not. You think I get the hang of this already? But, okay. Uh, yeah, just uh, Commissioner, uh, what the question here that I I think, you know, I understand all that. Okay. I think most people understand that we have to go through the litany of, uh, of, of, uh, of you know, just information. However, if I want to get to the, I don't want to hear all this. I want the option of just getting zero. Could I do that? Why can't I do it? Press zero to get to my to get a live operator. Because uh, sometimes you're sitting through five to eight minutes and you get frustrated and that's what I'm hearing. So we can look at the option of putting in a press zero to get straight to a call taker. Right. We can look at that. And in fact, the new 311 phone system, the new digital 311 phone system that's replacing the old analog system is going live in uh the first or second quarter of next year and that is something that we can look to put in there right okay yeah because um and there's you know another but I, we can we can meet and talk about um but why isn't joe mars on, on this call on, he's sitting on our, right here with me in my office well, he, all I, the didn't answers. Him. I didn't see him <laughs> come joe come joe let let's have you sworn in Wait, you know when yeah. i took over 311 i promised joe in exchange for him doing all of the work, I was going to handle all the council hearings, but he's definitely here, Joe. Yeah, because I, I have to meet with Joe also, because I have some... All right, go ahead. There, there's Joe. You want to swear, swear him in, uh, uh, council? Absolutely. Mr. Morrison, please, I, I see your, your hand up. Thank you. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth and, and answer honestly to council member questions. I do. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. Uh, all right, just, uh, hi, Joe. Uh, I, I, I just wanna, uh, uh, we've been joined by council member Ulrich and council member Yeager. 
Uh, and uh, also, I just want to just one more question, then we'll get to the uh, the council members' questions on their particular bills that there is being heard today. Um, now, this you you might me have mentioned to me, but for the record, um, noise from illegal car meetups is a major issue in many communities around uh, the city, and certainly my community. When reporting a complaint on 301, you must provide an exact address, which is not possible um, for this type of, many times for this type of request. Can you build in a general location feature? And I think we talked about it privately, but such a such like as cross streets or, or zip codes to identify the noise complaints. Many times it moves around too. Yes, absolutely. I think the 311 geolocation system really needs updating and you were the first to bring that to my attention early on. At our last hearing, we discussed that we are completely ripping out the old GIS system and replacing it with a new normal state-of-the-art GIS system on the Esri platform that allows for things that you would come to expect from using any other app like cross streets or pin on a map or things like things like that. We've gotten the beginnings of that system up and running for just for service for requests related to open streets. And now that that's, you know, that prototype is done, we're gonna expand it out and replace the three on one GIS. That, that's, uh, that's good news. Okay, I, I just wanna bring in my colleague, uh, Council Member Koo, who I believe has his hand raised for a question on his legislation. Starting time. Hi, uh, Commissioner, thank you for coming to uh, speak to us. So my questions are related to my bill, um, intro 101. Uh, 2018. So uh, is there a file size limit? And what are the limits on the current photo or video uploads? Councilmember Chua, I am so sorry. I don't know what the limit is, but it will take me less than five minutes after this hearing to get the answer and I will get that over to you in your office. But if there is a okay. need to expand, like if you have feedback, that we should expand the file size if you've run into problems or limitations. I will definitely take that feedback and see if it's possible to do. I'm sure it is, but I wanna just understand from my team, like if there is a limit, what the limitation is and why, and I'm sure we can work to increase it if necessary. Okay, so you get back to me on that, right? Absolutely. So it, yeah, so is, the, is every category on the website and mobile app capable of uploading photos and videos? Um, uh, right now, I only see illegal parking has a photo upload option. No, Council Member Koo, there's like a thousand plus service request types um, in, the, in the 311 system. And I would say about 50% of them have been enabled for photo and video messaging. So generally, as I was saying in my testimony, there are a few different types of reasons why we wouldn't have photo or video messaging enabled on a service request type. One would be, um, I gave the example of the Department of Homeless Services, which doesn't want to take, and I, I agree with them, photos um, from uh, for their service requests related to homeless people in need of assistance. Um, there are other examples where um, it's not so much about privacy, but um, a photo just wouldn't be useful. So for example, for the Department of uh, Finance, a lot of theirs are about property taxes and it's just they, there's no use to having, having a picture. So those are the general reasons why we wouldn't have photo or video enabled. I will say that our default position now is to enable photos and, and videos. Uh, you mentioned about Department of Finance. I think like, when constructions have complained, uh, it's easier for them to take a picture of the application and submit, you know, because this is a tax document. It's not, a, 
So it's easier for, for people, rather than explain to, to whoever answers the phone or uh, about the line, what, what ha what's happening in the application. So uh, I think it's, it helps the Department of Finance to solve problems too, with a picture of no. Okay, I will it definitely doesn't mean bring that. It had to be a picture. Yeah. I will certainly bring that feedback back. And um, I actually just got from my team the size constraints on the attachments is you can submit three attachments with any service request and each of them can be five megabytes, which for like 15 max for each service request, which probably is pretty good. I, I forgot all those uh, things. So how many, how long a video can you submit? A couple, one minute or? Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, probably definitely in minutes, not longer. Hmm. Hmm. But I can look it, I think it, it really depends on the type of video you're submitting. But we can work offline like if there's a problem. If you've had problems in the past submitting videos happy to work with you to understand what they are to see if we can address it. So no, I, I happen to uh, like the free woman system a lot. No, I think this is a, a, one of the greatest invention um, the city provide to uh, common citizens, no? Uh, but I, I think it's not, even though a lot of people know about it, but it's still not well advertised, no? For average citizens to use it. Because when I walk on the streets, I always want the people, they always complain to me about certain things, about potholes, about traffic lights. You know. I said, why did you call 311 <laughs> instead of telling me? <laughs> well, thank you <laughs> for Tell me hard. I had to go back to the office. Thank you yeah. so much for being so I get secondhand moment. information. Yeah, so I think we, we need to do, do more promotions of encouraging citizens uh, when they see something wrong, uh, they can call 311 direct. Time or, expired. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would just say one, one thing to that, if it's okay, Chair, which is my sense is that during the pandemic, 311 pivoted from being just, you know, a general clearinghouse of information to a lifeline for a lot of New Yorkers. And you can see that with our call volumes where we took like 24 million calls. I said in my testimony, that's that comes out to like three calls for every New Yorker. Um, so I think my sense is that during the pandemic, people who even people who were less familiar with 311 really became more familiar with it just because of the breadth of services and information it um, contained related to the pandemic. Right. But I agree with you, 311 is a gem. Yeah, Commissioner, just if I'm, I may jump in on because what you mentioned about the pandemic, uh, my a staffer called today to 311 to complain, you know, to, to ask a question on the vaccine mandate. And you had to use a voice, you know, you had to, you had to speak in, you know, what, what's your question? And it's on the vaccine mandate. It wouldn't accept that. Um, 311 would not accept that at all um, to the point where it, it, he couldn't get, he couldn't move forward. So you might want to check on that. Um, the chair, when he spoke to the, um... I wrote the service request for the vaccine mandate myself. So when your staffer spoke to the call center representative, I'm very confident that he or she got a lot of information about the vaccine mandate. No, that no, this was on the where you had to speak into the phone about your problem. What's your yeah. problem? And she, and he said vaccine mandate, and he kept saying and it wouldn't accept it. But then did he speak to a call center representative? No. No, we, oh. we, we're just trying to come up with like some of the bugs in the system. Oh. So I just, that's all I'm at. I'm just saying we didn't go that far. It just wouldn't accept it. So uh, we- I will definitely, I will definitely- Just look at look that. At just that. look at that. It's at the, a really good knowledge article. So right. you have time, speak to a right. representative about it. And by the way, just to uh, Peter, um, I've been using the, um, the, I've been sending photos of illegally parked cars and they usually get the attention faster when I send the police the photo. Um, mm. So that, that's been, I don't know if it's me, if it's just me because I'm actually identifying myself, but it, it gets it, I, I just think the, uh, the calls, uh, in one case, it was like within a minute, I got the police car with uh, a, you know, the light on and they were 
they had come to the uh, location. So it was amazing. But uh, I just want to um, uh, uh, call on uh, my uh, council member, Danny Drum, talk about his or uh, ask questions on his uh, particular legislation. Starting time. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Chair Holden. Uh, good morning, Commissioner. Uh, it's good to see you. Um, I, I, I think I heard from your testimony that you are opposed to uh, the intro that I have. Um, and I'm just curious, um, what is the procedure now that you have regarding um, adding um, the ability to be able to make complaints over 311 to legislation that is enacted by the council? I wouldn't say opposed. I would say that there's nuances to it. I agree with you uh, fully in concept that when a local law is enacted that requires a city to deliver a service or take a complaint, that the 311, which is the point of contact for residents, should be ready on the date of the local law, it's part of customer service. My concern with the bill is that oftentimes for 311 to create a service request, it's so easy, right? If I can just come up with the content, it's really easy, easy to do. But the service requests have to take into account the responding agency's information and business process. And so the 311 stuff, that portion, which is really important because that's where the resident's point of contact is, needs to wait for all of those decisions to be made and handled. Basically needs to wait for the agency's operation. So I'm not opposed to requiring 311 service requests on the date of the on the effective date. I'm concerned that. The reporting stuff where like there oftentimes where 311 won't even know that a piece of legislation requires a service request. It's the agency that generally comes to 311 and we have a team of business analysts that work with them to be like, hey, there's this local law. It requires us to do this. We're setting up a team of inspectors. We need to collect this type of information from the public. You wouldn't 311 wouldn't know that from reading legislation. Does that make sense? Well, not really. Oh. <laughs> uh, the reason being that, um, you know, you follow the council. I know that the agencies always look at every stated meeting to see what's being introduced. Uh, and it's easy to follow uh, what legislation has passed and for you to contact the agencies to see if in fact they need to work with you on implementing a the ability to be able to uh, take a service call or a request. Now, I don't know, you probably did hear my um, opening remarks, but you know, I had a very big problem with the Department of Buildings, for example, who I think, I mean, I don't know the internal politics of what goes on within the administration, but I don't think that they were too interested in my bill on uh, transgender bathrooms and, and, and non-gender bathrooms. Uh, and they didn't um, bother to reach out to anybody they would not take, uh, you would not take 311 calls on it. There was no ability to do that. And then even when uh, we approached your office, it might've been before you were the commissioner, um, that um, you know, there was a hesitancy or, or an unwillingness to, um, to change that situation. And so what we had to do was to write additional legislation to require um, that the DOB and do, do it comply with um, the ability to be able to take those complaints. So my point is that it's just what you're outlining would be maybe wonderful in a, in a perfect world, but the agencies don't always agree with the legislation which is passed at the will of the council uh, and then therefore um, will not come to <laughs> 311 or to, to you to, to want to set up that system. So. That's why I, I believe that my legislation is so needed because it would require it. Um, and, and, and as I've said from my examples before, it's not happening right now. 
I mean, do you meet regularly with the agencies on oh, legislation? Yes, there's a whole team of analysts at 311 who do this. Like during the pandemic, when we added so many different service requests, like you would not believe, well, I was, maybe you would believe, but I was really impressed with the thought that goes into what pieces of information need to be collected in a collaborative process with the agent. Well, just, just to wrap it up, because my time's expired, you know, um, if you're already doing that, why can't we codify that to ensure that with future legislation it happens? Um, I, I just don't understand why we can't do that. I think you can do that. Obviously, you can do that. Um, but you're putting the onus here on an office in city government that it, it's pretty easy for us to do our part. And we would have no way reading the legislation, reading a lot of legislation to know, is this one going to require a service request? Yes or no. And oftentimes, like it's the agencies that tell us, yeah, we, re we require a service request for this. But they don't do it anyway. It, it, we're talking in circles here at this point. <laughs> um, I, I do appreciate the extra time and we look forward to passing the legislation. And um, I, I appreciate your, your time. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, Council Member Drum. I wanna call on uh, my colleague, Councilman Yeager. Has a question, I see his hand raised. Starting time. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Commissioner, it's good to see you. I, before I ask my question, I just wanna say something I've said in these hearings before when you've testified, um, and uh, along with some of my colleagues here, having sat through many other agencies' testimonies, you are surely the straightest of straight shooters. Um, uh, really a breath of fresh air. and in terms of uh, administration testimony to this council, I'm very, very grateful. Uh, I, I just wanna bring up something that was uh, mentioned yesterday in a hearing uh, that I attended um, as a member of the Oversight Investigations Committee, which was joint with uh, the DOT, uh, the Transportation Committee. Uh, and the DOT and the Police Department were represented there. Um, a number of issues came up with regard to 311, many of which are not really uh, uh, under your purview, your responsibility, or frankly, just to be straight shooting, your fault at all. Um, uh, really, the issue in many respects has to do with closing out complaints without resolution. And that really falls on the agencies and the people who are closing out those complaints. It's not a 311 thing, it's not a do it thing. But I'm wondering, uh, and, and I asked this question yesterday, um, when a department, um, you know, let's pick, for example, the police department closes out a complaint uh, that, that, you know, for the, perp for the reason of not under police department jurisdiction. Is there some way that that complaint could, instead of dying, end up back in the 311 hopper to somehow be sent somewhere else or, or, or rejiggered or just, you know, not to end. And the point I made yesterday, I guess, you know, not to be hyperbolic, but sometimes that happens with me, um, you know, we're a hundred billion dollar corporation and no complaint has no resolution. So, I mean, there is a resolution somewhere. So it ought to be, in my view, some way that the city can not let these complaints just die with an agency, one guy typing in, not under my jurisdiction, have a great day, go away. What do you think about that? And is, is it something that you can do or is it something that the agencies have to do? Where does that happen? So from a technology perspective, Yes, I know how to do that. What, what you're asking for is based on a certain resolution type at a jurisdiction, if, if it's gone, if it's marked as out of jurisdiction, can that be, can those be sent somewhere else? And the answer from a technology perspective is yes. In fact, we do something very similar to that with other types of service requests. So like that is definitely a capability that exists from a tech perspective in the 311 system. The question is where? And so I think that is more a policy and ops question and not a tech question. The tech exists. It can be made to do exactly 
what you've said. The policy and op stuff obviously is not um, the role of 311 to make those decisions. So, uh, you know, in the in the spirit of the straight shooting that we engage in here, uh, this committee, where would an enterprising council member go to get that question resolved? Because it's not PD, because PD wants to kill the complaint. Um, it's not the, it, and, and it may be that in many cases, it, it, it is a different jurisdiction. So for example, you know, if, if the complaint is about a car, a derelict car, uh, and PD goes and it's done its job, they see it, there are tickets on the car. Well, it's not its job to remove it necessarily. That may be sanitation's job. It, sanitation's not going to, you know, I mean, the commissioner is a fine gentleman to be sure, but he's not going to come to this council and say, well, I'm happy to take more responsibility, send it my way. Um, so is, is this just go to city hall and talk to the mayor's people and that's the problem, talk to a deputy mayor, you know, what, what do we do? Because we, we've been talking about this for not just since yesterday. This has been something that's been going on uh, predating you uh, joining uh, Do It. Um, I'd like to think about that question okay. and get back to you. No problem. All right, I'm done. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Yeah, Commissioner, and, and what my colleague was talking about yesterday, uh, we had a hearing and um, some of the, and, and I've, I've experienced this where, uh, especially an NYPD complaint was closed within minutes um, of the service request being entered. And I, I know the police elected, you know, the police have a, a couple of categories that they could use. It looks like it needs to be expanded. So almost like, can we build out a feature that allows police officers or whoever the responding agency is to indicate that the problem is not yet resolved, but is being addressed? Because the police officers close it out. They said it's to corrective action or police officer, um, you know, um, it was not. You know, it was not. A, it was not a problem. Whatever they ha they have, but they just. They looks like they have a. They're they're too limited in their response, and sometimes it just cannot be handled, or they don't have the personnel at the time, and and so they'll make up that they, that the issue was closed, and, and that's what we're seeing. So is that possible? We can give the police officers or whatever agency more options. In terms of final dispositions. Final, yeah. Because yeah. it looks it looks like the police off you know police off some officers, and we've caught them by the way. And it's, I called the CEO of the prison. He said, "Yeah, they're going to be reprimanded. We're going to have to have you know some retraining or discipline for them because they closed it out without even get going to the location." And that's because I think they're short staffed. I, I guess. So yes, we can add final dispositions, and my office will work with the NYPD to get a sense of what additional final dispositions might be useful to them. But you both um, touch on a, I think, really good point about service request types that require a multi-agency response because there are certain types of things that it's not just one agency that does. And um, building the capabilities that allow for accommodate that type of multi-agency response. I do um, agree and acknowledge as I'm thinking about it is an important gap that needs to be filled. Right, okay. Thank you, council member Yeager. Thank you for your questions. You. Um, and I uh, just, uh, I, wanna, I wanna ask a few more questions on, uh, and this is one that's important, which uh, I think is really kind of relevant now. Uh, Local Law 70 of 2017 requires do it to create a notification system whereby business owners choose to be notified of any 311 complaints lodged against them. Um, how, does, how does the system work? I don't know, and I need to get back to you on that. I think that there is an SBS portal for that, but I, I need to find out and get you the full information. Yeah, I, I have I some other it. questions which you can get back to me, like how many businesses have signed up to receive such alerts and is this data available on the open data website? So, so we will get all of that um, information about that program to you. Um, 
there is a lot of three-in-one data available on the open data portal, including now, I think one of your pieces of legislation, the service level yeah. agreements are live on open data. Right. Um, you know, let, let me just, uh, um, for, you know, for illegal, I have a couple more questions on um, some, uh, for illegal parking uh, complaint types. Uh, the app uh, includes different violations, including, and, and I brought this up to you a few years ago, I think it was a few years ago, blocking bike lanes, blocking hydrant, fire hydrants, et cetera. However, it does not have an option, and this is a sore point with me, blocking crosswalks. You even have a bus layover, well, I don't even know what that is, but a bus layover complaint on the pull down menu, but I don't, I still, you know, I have to put, and here, here's, the, here's the, my issue, on blocking crosswalks, which is all over the city, a car is parked in the crosswalk. I have to put in blocking sidewalk. And I would say about 50% of the time, the police close it out as unfounded because I couldn't put in blocking crosswalk. I put in block. Well, I have good news there. We have parked in crosswalk now. <laughs> Describe the parking violation. And we have blocking driveway, double parked, parked at bus stop, parked in bike lane, parked in bus lane. I don't, I don't have parked it. Parked in I crosswalk, it. parked in crosswalk. Where? I don't have it on my app. It's in alphabetical order, parked in crosswalk. I Any have, here's what I time? have. Commissioner, here's what I have. I did it yesterday too. I couldn't do it. I had blocking bike lane, blocking hydrant, blocking sidewalk, commercial overnight, double park, posted rules, bus layover. Are, are we looking at the same app? Oh, you know what? I we added it to city vehicle permit violation, uh -huh. not the general parking <laughs> violation. You were right. I was wrong. Okay. We added it in the wrong place, but we're gonna put it in the parking violations. Right. All right. Okay. All so right. We're, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> but I heard you. I just put it in the wrong one. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm getting a lot. I have uh, due to numerous complaints related to film filming industries uh, when they take over a block. And um, do you plan to designate that as a separate category for such complaints? Because I'm getting a lot of those too. Joe? We don't take, it's not a separate item on the app. It's not one of the app items, but of course you, it's because the app is mobile optimized, you can go to 311 online. So we can take a look at it further, but uh, it's definitely not a distinct item on the app. Yeah, since so a lot of, there's a lot of film shoots and I get a lot of complaints and I I'm sure some of my colleagues, same thing. And there's, there's no way to, it's hard to complain about it, you know, especially uh, something on the app. Yeah, so if you could, uh, um, if you can look at that also, uh, Joe, maybe you could look at the illegal dumping complaint type was removed from both the app and the website. Why was that change made? Because it's a huge problem in many districts around throughout the city. I'll have to look into that and get back to you on that one as well. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of my constituents are complaining that if you file a missing garbage pickup complaint, it'll take you almost like five minutes to do so. Um, and that should, that's something again, not only on the app, but just the complaint itself. It's frustrating. Uh, you need to, you know, you have to see, here's what happens. You have, you need to answer about 10 questions then provide personal information again, despite the fact that it, it was provided when a person registered to use the app. So, uh, okay. before you're able to submit a complaint. We're, we're redoing the app. The app needs some updating and we are just launched a project to totally redo the 311 app. Right now on the app, you only see the most popular service request types and it's certainly not every service request type. I completely agree that it needs, you, the app needs to support more service request types and it will, and that has- Yeah, I mean, there's a lot more room I mean, you could yeah. be able to scroll down and yes. find your like history. I think it makes sense that you can't do everything that you can do on the website from the app, but it definitely needs to be a lot more than what exists today. Um, right. And I hear that feedback and right. yeah. I'm working on it. Yeah, because um, I, you know, I love the app. I just wish it could do more. It needs to um, do more. Yeah, and but it, it's really an 
and what 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 council member ku mentioned that we have to get the word out I, i'd like to get the word out on the app i mean i i think that's what we need to tell people you all you have a smartphone you should have the app the 311 app it would save uh you know a lot of uh, headaches for people hanging on the line and being frustrated um agree so, uh, you know can, can we sit down at one point and discuss some of the suggestions you're hearing uh yeah without a doubt i have a bunch of them written here but i would love to okay uh a few more questions in february 2019 speaker johnson expressed frustration with agencies uh differing ap approaches to reporting their responses to 311 complaints and suggested an interagency working group to improve such reporting. Have any agencies followed the speaker's suggestion that they convene such a working group, uh, um, to, group to um, a uniform agency in reporting how 311 resolves 311 complaints? So that was from before my time, unfortunately, which right. I know is not the answer that you want to hear. The mayor's office of operations has historically done a lot of um, the business coordination with agencies, but I'll look at that specific legislation and find out what's happened. All right, the, the app is uh, currently only available in English, right? Yes. All right, do you plan to expand? Yes, All right. <laughs> without a doubt. Reason number one, two, and three. I know, I'll give you a why we need to replace the app. All right. All right. Um, let's talk about customer satisfaction. Great. So, uh, <laughs> what type of user testing does Do It and Three Hundred One do uh, on the app uh, and and web service? Um, how do you get feedback to make uh, the end user reporting more seamless? Joe, can you just go through the results of our, or the type of customer service feedback we ask for, how we get it and what the results of it? Sure, I'll speak to the, the public feedback first, and then we can talk a little bit about the work that's done on the development side of the Commission of Tissues, the development team when it comes to user testing and user design. On the public feedback, I'm very pleased to share, we have multiple service, multiple customer satisfaction surveys for each channel, for example, for the phone channel, for your online, for your text, for your mobile. Um, we do those following some of the basic standards for surveys, you know, using Likert scale. So you can basically use the data to compare time over time. And we, all the languages. Yeah, and we also have introduced this year, thanks to council member Q, uh, the survey in 10 designated languages for customers who call 311. So we're very excited about that. It's something we had wanted to do, it's something the council member wanted. Uh, the team at 301 was able to get that in place this year. So we'll be continuing that going forward. I'm also pleased to say, I'll take a moment here, the biggest survey we do every year, we just concluded, it's the customer satisfaction survey. We actually contract with a vendor called CFI um, Inc. They're based out of Michigan. They're the actual leader in what they call the American Customer Satisfaction Survey Index. Forgive my geekiness for a moment, but I'm very pleased with this one. Um, that gauges customer satisfaction. It's a very robust survey. 790 plus customers are surveyed, 25 questions about their experience with 311. I'll give you the headlines. The assessment that this firm makes is that 311 satisfaction is on par with the best in the private sector in the world and across the country. Further, you drill down to how the customer service agents handle the calls, and they get a score of 92. Um, that's, you know, on, again, 700 plus customers. I, I don't know anything in New York City that someone can get a score of 92, um, but it speaks to the quality of the agents handling the calls, but also all the work that goes on behind the scenes from the technology teams that do, you know, the, the work and the development to the content teams. So that's the public side. Uh, again, try to keep this a little bit short, but on the user testing side, there's extensive work that goes on. Uh, we very much use, uh, you know, the current models on the technology side, the CRM team, as we call it, and they will go through uh, iterations to make sure that this is working from a user perspective as well as meeting the technical requirements. And that's for the online uh, application as well as for the mobile app. Yeah, uh, so you, I don't know if you heard my uh, comments with my staff testing the. Um... When they call 311, like I said, I do, I use the app, but um, 
I did use the, I did call in today, this morning, and I, I was frustrated. I couldn't get an operator for you know, over five minutes and I just, I stopped. And uh, that's what I think we need to, to look at. Um, also, the, just, just an observation. Um, when we got a live operator, she gave, well, let's say her name was Nora. She says, hi, this is Nora. She doesn't give a, an ID number like 911 operators do. Is there a reason for that? Uh, they will give one if asked, because again, we do want to make sure that we're tracking that. But we also have a, a more of a, you know, it's a, it's a customer service orientation. You want that customer to feel comfortable that they're talking to a person, they're talking to someone who lives in the city. Uh, so, you know, we, we start off with the name and how may I help you call through one. But if asked, they will provide a, an agent ID. Well, when I speak to constituents, and I, I'll just give you a little feedback, uh, they'll say I got an operator that was rude. And if they said their name is Nora, there could be a hundred Noras in, you know, in, in the 301 system. So I think they need to give the, uh, you know, operator, you know, 1652 or, you know, something like that. They, they, they need to write it down or at least not, I'm sorry. So like a, a customer could write it down. So your operator 1652, you know, something like that, where rather than just a, a person's name, Joe, I, I would, that's just about, feedback. I, um, Joe, whether you, you talk about your quality assurance program and our call listening? Sure. So I, I appreciate what you're sharing there, council member. And again, um, it is available if someone were to ask. Um, but as the commissioner said, we surround the one experience with a quality assurance program, uh, the team that does that. We do call listening on a number of levels. How well does the agent handle the call? Do they follow protocol? Do they, do they provide polite professional service? We're also gauging it to make sure the content is working right for the customer. It shouldn't be jargon. It shouldn't be too bureaucratic, et cetera. So we're able to evaluate that on a proactive basis. We have a whole methodology that we follow, but also on a responsive basis. So if you or your staff have a situation, if a customer has a situation, and we do take customers uh, who do call us or submit through correspondence uh, requests you know, for, for customer complaints, I am pleased to say we actually get more customer compliments than we actually get formal complaints. But that quality assurance department can do that research. We can re go back and look at calls, evaluate what happened, and then not only work with, you know, to answer the question, but also work with that agent and work with the broader program if need be. All right. The, how many people were in that customer satisfaction survey? How many people participated? Uh, I believe the number was 790. On the one. On, on, on the one, yes. Sorry, on the one, yes. On the major. And, 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 that but that, that survey only covers call center, right? Correct. That was call center. Mm -hmm. So would you be willing to extend a similar customer satisfaction survey to those submitting requests through like a mobile app or a website? We have that. We yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, that, that currently exists. That's a separate survey from, from the one I just spoke to, but we do that uh, through for the different channels, for, for online, for mobile app, et cetera. So, so beyond service satisfaction surveys, do you do them for all app, you know, uh, itself, for all the apps? Uh, for the app itself, like, um, you know, are the regular, are regular New Yorkers in that testing room? Um, who actually does the user testing? Again, we had this, we had this user testing discussion uh, when we were talking about the vaccines and no, we do not pick random people on this off the street and say, hey, do you want to come and test our app? We have a team of professionals who are professional testers who do the testing of our applications, including 311. All right, so where are they? Are there any surveys done for people with disabilities? Uh, not necessarily specific to someone with a person with disabilities, but surveys are available to everyone. But you don't, you don't, but I, so I think we need to, to identify people who may have a problem using it. Um, so I think that that might, you know, if we want to improve it, I think we may want to survey people with disabilities in the near future, so. Um, well, I, I will just say, I agree with you and we will do that. We work very closely with the mayor's office of people with disabilities uh, and they have, there's someone who works there who's actually a part of, of do it, but assigned there who does all of the ADA testing on all of our applications. And we're actually building out his team 
now because he's so busy. Okay. Um, one, one second, one second. Okay. Um, I think my team is saying that uh, we have no more questions. Uh, let me look, hold on one second. I, I think you talked about some of the um, issues uh, uh, on uh, on the bills, which I think we could we could look at, and uh, I think some of this we can do offline. But um, anyway, I thank you, Commissioner. I thank you for your Thanks testimony. For thank you, Joe, and uh, hopefully we can meet soon and talk about some other issues. Um, yes, yeah, absolutely. I, I really would like to cut down because I think people are hanging up. And here's what's happening. I'll just sum summarize. Here's what's happening in in. Uh, like I, I, you know, I'd like to get a number of 311 calls um, related in, 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 to my district someday where we could, because uh, I know I get a lot. I, I urge people to call 311 because quality of life is very, very important uh, in my district and, and maintaining it is important. Um, so, you know, we get to a point, um, and, I, and again, I got too many people calling, you know, calling rather than using the app. And I'd like to get more people using the app. So, you know, advertising that, pushing it is important. If we can get some graphics to send out, you know, whether on email and so forth. But uh, I'd like that option. It's very, very important to me to, to skip all the, um, the announcements, which uh, many of my constituents don't, you know, don't need. They just want to get to the, you know, the issue and, and speak to a live person. So we can get the, the operator to zero option on the phone at one point. I know you want them to listen to some messages, that's fine. But I think rather than six, seven minutes, uh, eight minutes in some cases, um, uh, that, uh, you know, that we can get to that point where um, we could speed things up. Yeah, right. I, I don't think we can ever promise to get rid of it all to, altogether just because call management and making sure we don't have big queues and making sure the calls go to the right places. It's like really complicated. And I invite you one day to join one of our calls on this so you can hear the ridiculous complexity that goes into it. You oh, I get it. It's a hard thing. So I, yeah. I do agree with the sentiment that we less is more and we could cut it down and Great. there's probably room to chop. Yeah, at least at some point. So, I don't, you know, because people get frustrated and they hang up. And here's what happens, especially on police calls, they call the precinct. And you know what happens when they call the precinct. I do. Nobody picks up. <laughs> and, and that's what happens in a lot of precincts. Uh, then nobody picks up the phone. And now there's this, the cops are not even there, that kind of thing, where, you know, again, they're, they're frustrated. So that's why we, what we, we don't want them to call the precinct because it is, they are uh, short staffed, obviously. And, answering calls especially so i don't want people to call the precinct so if we can speed things up in reporting on, on 301 um that's it well thank you commissioner does uh but, but before you leave does uh i'd like to ask uh council irene uh, bohowski does any other council members have questions council member holden i do not see anyone um with um hand up for questions right okay. now okay all right. Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I'll turn it back to Council. Thank, thank you, Chair Holden. And thank you, Commissioner, for your testimony. We will now turn to public testimony. Once your name is called, a member of our staff will unmute you, and the surgeon at arms will give you the go-ahead to begin after setting the timer. We will be limiting testimony to five minutes. Council members will have an opportunity to ask questions after each, each panel has completed testimony. I would like now to welcome our first panelist to testify, Noel Heldalgo from Beta NYC. Starting time. Great, can you hear me? Oh, I have the wrong camera. Um, hi, my name is Noel Hidalgo. I'm the executive director of Beta NYC. 
Uh, we're a nonprofit organization here in New York City um, that's dedicated to civic technology. Uh, we are uh, very, very thankful for all the 301 operators and the staff uh, for being our municipal heroes during the pandemic. Um, they helped my neighbors through the toughest times, and I wanted to make sure that you know that our civic tech community appreciates your dedication to serving all of our communities. We also want to thank the 301 team for making a successful platform migration, as the commissioner uh, spoke about. Over the last year, we've seen better open data and automatic geocoding, even though that is going to be updated. Um, uh, we have seen better data being produced to the general public, which has been helpful for community boards and community-based organizations to have a better understanding of what are the specific issues that are happening within their neighborhood. We absolutely appreciate that. Um, lastly, I want to just say we're very disappointed that New York City's website and digital tools are so convoluted that my friends and neighbors have to be resorting to calling 311, therefore increasing those call volumes. Throughout the pandemic and the vaccine rollout, my family, friends, and neighbors ended up calling 311's website uh, because the city's websites were not accessible in their languages, they were not accessible via screen readers, and we really wish that the city's website tools and 311 did have the voice of everyday New Yorkers in the room so that way they could specifically talk about the problems that they're experiencing in the tool. We fundamentally believe that 311 is connecting city government with New Yorkers and we just need to finally tie that last little knot between New Yorkers giving their feedback exactly on how these tools and services work. It doesn't take city council members to point it out inside of a commission, uh, um, a committee hearing uh, to bring this up that conversation should be happening ongoing daily. Um, that is the agile process that is at the core of why 311 redesigned its system. We need to make sure that we close that agile loop. Um, concerns about the legislation, um, Council Member Drum, I really enjoy your proposed legislation. There happens to be a data set up on the open data portal that, that alludes to uh, uh, service requests and uh, descriptors that service requests database hasn't been updated since uh, June 27 of 2019. Uh, we really enjoy hearing council members asking for better features um, inside of 311. Once again, we don't believe that user interfaces should be legislated, uh, but that they should be included in a constant conversation. Um, and so um, we really think that the user uh, interface for 311 should be simpler than four steps. Um, and so we look forward to having a detailed conversation of those specific pieces of legislation. Um, I kind of want to spend the remaining balance of my uh, testimony focused on the usability of the app. Um, we have done some in-house user testing and have been perplexed of, yes, we have the mobile app, but then the mobile app sends us to a website uh, on our mobile device that that website, that form is not uh, um, mobile friendly, uh, particularly some of the DOT tools. Uh, we want to see all agencies integrated into the 311 system. Um, there's this tool that, or there's this service that's called an API application protocol interface. It essentially allows for different computers to talk to each other. In the redesign of 311, the most uh, um, kind of the digitally savvy 311 users um, uh, were brought into the room and we were asked, what would we do with this API? We were promised with an API. We went through a whole conversation talking about um, how the public would benefit from using an API. Sadly, we've been told that this API has been um, deprioritized um, and is not anywhere on the, the kind of like the product listing or, or the feature set. Uh, and we really need this API because it helps make uh, other tools simpler. I use this app called Reported to help do the exact same thing that you were talking about, Council Member Holden, Holden reporting cars in bike lanes and in crosswalks. Uh, this tool would be made much simpler if there was an API. I currently have to keep my own personal database to track what 311 service requests I do through Reported which ones I submit via the phone, which ones I submit via the web, and which ones I submit via the mobile app, because there is not a consistent user experience across all of these different services. So we would hope that 311 is able to include New Yorkers in the room to specifically talk about the inconsistent user experience on all of these uh, interfaces, so that way we can really make 311 what, it, what it, it is, which is the single best conduit to New York City government. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Noel. I, what I 
you know, like, um, I'd like to hear more about, you know, your critiques of the app because um, mine has been, I, I've been frustrated because we talked about some of, some of these things for two years now and they still haven't been corrected. I think we need some kind of seminar and meetings with, um, with uh, Do It possibly uh, because you are, I mean, I, I think you're, you certainly use the app a lot and your frustrations um, are evident and we could make it better. Uh, have you looked at other apps uh, from other cities at all on how they do it? Um, I don't file 301 service requests in other cities. Um, so I haven't done an in-depth user testing of their tools. I can just tell you what works and what would be better on our end. Um, in the platform change, um, to using this new database, uh, um, user profiles were introduced on the website. And so if I file a service request through the website, I actually have kind of a, um, a clipboard of all of the various service requests. Um, the app does this inherently, but without uh, a uh, login capability. So I actually have to use my inbox and a spreadsheet to kind of combine these two um, um, uh, platform so that way I know all of the various service requests that I have that are out there. Um, and so like the user testing is something that we should be doing across all of our digital properties. My main frustration with the convoluted nature of the city government websites is that um, it is that they become complicated or they're not in an accessible format, whether it's language or platform um, or, or um, capa you know, capability, I, my you know, screen reader. Um, so therefore I have to call 311 to find where do I get this other piece of information. Um, and I th the practice of listening to the user is already baked into 311. It is great to hear the surveys that uh, 311 is constantly ranked high on. Uh, but when we start thinking about platforms for the 21st century, it is about doing that user testing. Yes, there are professionals, and those professionals do see things that the coders don't see. But the everyday New Yorker sees things that the professionals don't see. Um, and this is what will help us really kind of complete that loop, close that agile loop. Um, so I can't point you to other cities, but I can tell you how we can be better. Okay, great. Um, so because, uh, obviously, uh, I don't know if you, you had, you had to call 311, some, some issues, uh, that we've mentioned today about the length of the call and, and the frustration with calling the, the call center, mm -hmm. but the app itself, I think could be so much better, um, where you, know, you could upload uh, videos and you could uh, um, really get some, some feedback um, a little bit more in real time to, to your issue. Uh, and I mentioned a few today. Do you have any other you know, suggestions on the app itself what, uh, other than what you've mentioned already, in particular complaints that you've logged uh, over, the, over the years? Yeah, um, well, uh, I know that DOT um, actually, let me start off with parks. Um, parks Department has a pretty robust um, uh, urban forestry database. And, and for right now, I have uh, residual um, um, trees in roadway service requests that are still open from um, storms that happened two to three years ago. Um, and so Maybe this was part of the site migration process, but I, there are, are service requests that are still out there that are indicated as open, which then deteriorate the um, kind of like the service level agreements when we look at the data. So how can 311 go through and work with the agencies to make sure that uh, service requests that have been addressed prior to the migration are truly um, reflected in the data. Um, you know, there were pretty big trees that came down over the last few storms in Greenpoint, and the data still shows that those trees are still down in the street. And that just reflects poorly on the agency that has done a great job to respond to those particular service requests. Um, another example is um, the street lamps. 
um, you know, we've gone through a mad dash over the last, uh, I would say, eight years to replace all of our street lamps uh, to be LED street lamps. When DOT came through and replaced the street lamp that is directly across the street from my house, the hood on it got bent up. And so I have the street lamp literally pouring into my apartment. Um, and it is um, when the sun goes down and that street lamp goes on, it is pretty much daylight inside of my apartment. Um, we have to use blackout shades. Um, and I've filed the request. I've used the DOT system. The DOT system isn't integrated into 311. And so I wish that agencies would understand the investment that has been made in 311 to make a seamless loop so that way these service requests can actually be accounted for and tracked. Yeah, that, that one, um, uh, we could talk offline on that one, but that is that would be annoying to me uh, to have a light shining in, into your house. You shouldn't have to do an investment, but I agree that, and you heard the commissioner saying that some agencies are not cooperating. Well, they should be made to cooperate. Uh, hopefully under the new mayor, they'll, they'll do that. Um, and that we shouldn't have to go to you know, I still don't, I still can't get stumps removed, tree stumps removed uh, in my district on a timely basis and took exception with um, the commissioner um, in a parks uh, committee hearing uh, a few weeks ago when they say it takes two years and that's a long time, but the, I, I have some that are 10 years outstanding. We never get updates. We don't, we have no idea of the service request. Uh, so that's, Parks is a is a sore point with with me, um, but you and you mentioned DOT. Of course, it's a huge sore point. Uh, with it just goes into some vast black hole of of, of service requests like your your street light. Um, we don't know what is going on with that, and uh, but I'll I'll try to uh, you know handle that complaint of yours uh, personally uh, if we can see if we can get some resolution. We should have to deal with that. Um, Anything else you'd like to add? Because I really, we really rely on your organization to, to, to tell us, uh, give us feedback on obviously this this topic and many others. But I thank you, thank you, Noel. Yeah. Th thank you for giving me the opportunity. Um, uh, I want to commend really three one one. I think that uh, Joe and and the team at three one one have done a great job. You know, for the decade that they have been uh, out there listening to New Yorkers complain about <laughs> everything under the sun. Um, I just think that you know, as we really have identified a build with not for mentality across public interest technology, and particularly over the last decade inside of the gov tech ecosystem, that it's imperative that we we really just connect the values that were expressed in redoing 311's app um, and really connect that to, to where we should be uh, in New Yorkers. And you know, to just to overemphasize this point, yes, there are professional testers who are useful to testing out the app, but the average everyday New Yorker needs to be included into the conversation on how to make this particular tool, which is so critical to so many government uh, 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 services, as useful as possible. And, and then let's also make sure that we're looking at all of the web properties that exist across New York City government, because there is a direct link. When you can't find something on nyc.gov or an agency website, and there's poor information management there, or if that tool doesn't work for you, it's going to lead directly to a 311 call. And so let's figure out how to minimize uh, that work. And that is an investment inside of a digital services unit inside of New York City government. Um, and the time has come for that. So uh, thank you for this time. And just one other thing, I just just for my own uh, information, because I'm going to be talking to the NYPD on your you know, you, your complaints are, let's say, by uh, blocking a, uh, a bike lane or whatever, what what have you gotten? What, what's the percentage of satisfaction you've gotten from, as a, you know, like the result of the complaint that the, the action was taken? What um, would you say? It, I know it varies, uh, it, but. It absolutely varies depending upon what precinct I'm in. Um, you know, some precincts, yesterday's hearing was very illuminating and thank you for, for you know, being vocal about your frustrations and my frustrations and, and my friend's frustrations in North Brooklyn have been very similar. Um, you know, the fact that we, we could file a, a service request um, and it stays open for hours or is immediately addressed within minutes, uh, depending upon what location it is. 
Um, I commute for, over the Williamsburg Bridge down Clinton Street. Um, routinely, I'm coming across a bi-directional bike lane um, uh, that is consistently blocked um, with vehicles. I've gotten to the point that I don't even file service requests for Clinton Street because um, it's just like that's it's just going to be blocked. Like there doesn't seem to be an appropriate level of response from the D from the NYPD to actually address the the things that cause those blocked bike lanes. There are other times where I have gotten telephone calls at two o'clock in the morning from unknown numbers that I'm like, who is this? Like, and they it's like, oh, we we're, we've come out to address your blocked bike lane um, and, and nobody's around, you're not around. There's been construction material in the bike lane, no way to divert. And the NYPD will say, well, that's not our problem. Council member no, no. Rivera ended up creating legislation so that way there has to be, you know, a, a protected temporary bike lane. All of these issues are frustrating and they don't, they speak to a specific issue about a non-agile government and a non-responsive government. When you see that data point um, and you see that data point and you see the service request closed out within five minutes, that is a massive red flag. Uh, that should be brought up inside a city council and you know summons should be done like that's criminal activity right like how can right. you respond well, to it well, let me assure you though that and, and tell any of your members um, or anybody that if they experience situations where something was closed out without actually addressing the problem my committee i would love to hear about this so that we could address this and you heard my comments with the commissioner that if we can give the officers that respond some other choices rather than just closing it out because they couldn't get to it or they're short staffed or there's, you know, because I do listen to the police, my local precinct scanner from time to time and I'll hear each particular uh, patrol holding four or five 911 jobs. So getting mm -hmm. to 311, I could see is is difficult on in cer on certain hours, but they're not allowed to report honesty uh, apparently. Um, in in some in some regards with the the precinct. So, um, but I need to know complaints that you feel are suspect that something was not reported, or there's a there's a cover up, or there's special consideration, uh, which I have reported and I continue to report to the local precinct. For you know sometimes uh, action is taken they'll uh, discipline the officers for not responding um but again we need to get bring more of this out so i thank you Noel, for for uh test you know your testimony today and for a answering my questions uh uh irene are there any um other questions for this panelist any other questions chair i do not see any questions and i want to thank Mr. Hidalgo for his testimony. And Cheryl, looks like we do not have any more witnesses right now. And if we have missed anyone who has registered to testify today and had yet been called, please use the Zoom raise hand function and you will be called in order that you have raised the hand. I see no hands right now. And now I turn it over to a chair for the closing remarks and to adjourn the hearing. So thank, uh, thank you. Thank you uh, to my committee council for a job well done again. Irene uh, Bahovsky has done a, a terrific job along with uh, um, Charles Kim of the uh, technology committee. And I wanna thank everyone and sergeants, thank you all for your great work today. Uh, and I think we've accomplished a lot um, and we have a lot more work to do and hopefully working with uh, uh, Commissioner Tish and do it. Um, we can fix some of the problems that were mentioned today and make the uh, not only the 301 experience better, but the uh, certainly uh, uh, streamline some of the complaints and make sure that the complaints are being uh, addressed uh, by all the city agencies uh, and have all the city agencies cooperate. So I want to thank you all again and um, thank you, uh, the council members who have attended this uh, this hearing. This, meet, this hearing is now adjourned.